When we talk about the tone of an essay, what we're talking about is the level of formality of your writing. So the level of formality. And the really crucial thing to take away from this video is that there is a continuum or a range of levels of formality. Which means that even though we can distinguish between more formal writing, more academic writing, and that'll be the first passage here, and a more kind of popular or informal style, there's no right or wrong with this. In other words, um, your writing can really fit into a number of different categories depending on the, the assignment, uh, the audience, and the biggest thing to take away from this is just a certain level of consciousness as to what constitutes quite formal writing uh, versus what, what some of the features of informal writing are. So let's compare these two passages. And the first one talks about sea voyages in the Pacific, and then the second one is more kind of memoir-style account of a voyage in the Atlantic. So the first one is more formal, and one thing you'll see here is that there's very little use of I. Okay, so no I. You are allowed to use I in certain formal contexts, uh, but in this case, the, the tone is quite kind of objective or scientific, so a fairly objective kind of tone. In the Pacific, traditional canoes were often double-hauled or used outrigger floats. Another thing you see here is the use of fairly technical jargon, which is more common in formal academic writing. Okay, And we also typically see a more kind of elevated diction. So you would not expect to see swear words uh, or slang or what's sometimes referred to as colloquial writing. So the word colloquial means really just slang or common day speech. Um, so no colloquial writing in academic writing no colloquial phrases. Um, the second passage doesn't have too many of those either, but it is just something to be aware of. Another thing that you'll find in a more academic kind of style is a more nuanced kind of approach. So you see here, for instance, this phrase, it is possible. In other words, a claim is not being made that this is 100% true, but there are different theories out there. And you notice too this reference to other criticism or other theories. So there's criticism out there. There are people with ideas and we tend to quote them or refer to them and interact with those ideas. Academic writing then, because it does these things, that is why it also seems then more objective. It isn't necessarily, of course. Another thing to watch out for is a lack of emotion. In this case, we have this word remarkably, for instance, and that's as much emotion as we see in this passage. The second passage uses a word exhilarating, by contrast, which is much more emotional, right? So more, I guess we could call this hyperbolic, more, more hyperbole, a little bit more over the top. Um, so just to sum up then, what constitutes academic writing is a style that's a bit more objective, uh, that is typically more nuanced, often also uses sentence, a sentence structure that's more complex. Um, clauses are often subordinated to each other, more technical, not so emotional, and I think you can kind of see the point or the, the proof uh, in this passage. The second passage then is much more popular in nature. You'll see a more frequent use of I. You also see these contractions sometimes in popular writing. So a contraction is where the apostrophe stands in for part of the word that's left out. And here the full word would be cannot. In formal writing, you would definitely want to spell that out. Other things you'll note about the second passage is that it contains more narrative. So popular writing tends to be more narrative, whereas academic writing is often more strictly logical, it follows a more direct and logical path. Um, this second kind of style uh, is also typically more relaxed in its diction, so more casual diction. And we said before that sometimes that can become colloquial even. So here we have words like all right and gusto. These are not words you would necessarily find in academic writing. Another thing is the, the use of certain types of sentences. So more dashes often in academic, or sorry, in popular writing, uh, shorter clauses as in the last bit here. Lots of features then that make this more 
casual, more popular um, than the more academic prose that we had before. One thing or a couple things to end with then. First I just want to repeat that there's this continuum and neither of these two styles is what you should necessarily be aiming for all the time. Uh, but you just have to find your, your place in this continuum uh, and it is always going to depend on the assignment and the audience. The last thing is that often when students are new to academic writing they tend to overdo it. They often copy the worst features of academic writing which are its difficulty and impenetrability. Don't do that. Um, do this simple test to help you out. If it's something that you would never say to anybody in person then don't write it either. And even though academic writing is a little bit different from normal speech, I do think that's a good test uh, so that you don't go overboard and, and use this really complicated diction, use a thesaurus all the time. Uh, don't do that. Try to be natural and try to focus on getting your ideas across in a clear and cogent manner.